Hello, everyone, and welcome to Healing Connections. This is Emmy Badness. Today, we are talking about animal communication with Kathy Van Gilder, who helps connect people and their pets, both living and deceased, through animal communication. She helps people to know how their animal is feeling, what they need, and gain insight into any concerns people have about their pets. She also helps people hear the amazing wisdom their pets want to share with them so that they feel better and have a happier life. She teaches people how to communicate with animals through live and online courses and provides animal communication through personal sessions. She works with animals and their humans locally here in the Minneapolis St. Paul area, greater Minnesota, and globally. Kathy is the author of For the Love of Animals, The Untold Thoughts of Our Pets. Kathy is also a professional pet photographer and has photographed a couple of my pets with beautiful images. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you so much for having me on. My pleasure. My pleasure. We have had a conversation before and we talked about giving a voice to animals on the Healing Connections podcast episode 23, which was just fabulous. And I'm so glad to have you back. And I understand that you're moving more into communicating even more with animals than ever before and photographing animals. And I thought it'd be fun for the viewers and the listeners to get a little bit behind the scenes on how you communicate with animals. So if you could just, oh, did I just hear somebody there? (laughs) Oh boy. They want to, they want to (laughs) talk. Holly definitely likes to be a part of things that I do. So sometimes she's here with me and other times she's not, she kind of gets a sense of when she needs to be present and when she doesn't. So today, apparently she wants to be present. (laughs) Well, because her photo is right behind you, right? That is Holly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> says, well, if I'm going to be there with my mom, I'm going to be in the room. <laughs> yes. Maybe a little fame. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, do you want to give us a little bit, um, wherever you want to, whatever you want to share about animal communication that you think um, our viewers and listeners might find helpful? Yeah, um, if you're new to animal communication, I can just explain a little bit about how it works. Mm-hmm. It's a basically it's a two-way conversation that in this case that we're talking about is between a human and an animal. And so um, it takes place telepathically. And um, what that means, it's it's uh, telepathically, uh, it's either through pictures through thought, words, uh, or feeling, or just a knowing. Uh, And so, and believe it or not, I'm sure most people would, but animals have that same kind of communication going back and forth between each other as well. And, you know, they're great at it. We're just, um, we just, as humans, have forgotten how to open that channel. And most of us are born with having some kind of sense of, you know, animals and intuition and all of that. And and we we shut down a lot of that um, as we go along through life, because um, that's kind of what life can do sometimes. (laughs) Um, So, so yeah, so it's a, it's a two-way conversation and it's really a, a, a quite a gift. And, and I do find that animals are very, very direct communicators they um they can they they always speak the truth and they always speak from their heart and they really love to connect and give us information about what they want us to know about maybe you know something they need or something that the human needs so it sounds like it's a form of maybe like a telepathic intuitive or sort of a psychic connection yeah, it very much is. And I don't always love the word, word psychic, but in this case, actually, it, it is. It's very telepathic, psychic, uh, in that, you know, we're connecting. My way of the way that I really love to teach people and how I've always communicated with animals is really through going through the heart chakra, going through the heart, because it's the clearest channel. 
And it's also the channel that really helps our animals know that we're coming from a place of love, a place of trust, uh, and just a place that they can trust us. And so that they know that, you know, we have the best intentions. We are, we are speaking our truth. Beautiful. I love that going through the heart. And I recall our last conversation that you shared at that time that animals really, the main message was that they wanted us to live in the heart or live from the heart. Right. And I find that, and I talk with both uh, animals in the wild and then also pets and, and the messages that I've been receiving mostly from the animals in the wild these days because we live in such rocky times and the planet is really, really shifting is that they keep saying, live in your heart. And that's the, the thing that they can, that, that can really help us um, evolve and, and to feel safer in a, in a world that doesn't always feel so safe. Yeah. Because when a, it's so interesting because we as humans are actually animals, right? We're mammals. <laughs> we tend to think that we are <laughs> separate from other creatures on this planet, but we're just all part of the animal kingdom. We are, we are indeed. And we are built a little bit differently, uh, human beings and the animals and, and the, and the biggest difference is, is that, you know, we've come here to evolve and to grow and we've got egos and the animals actually what, what people forget or maybe don't understand is that animals actually are here to help us evolve. That is their main purpose. Their main purpose is to help really hold the vibration of love on the planet, which is why they love the heart. And then also to help us evolve. And they help us evolve by mirroring back things, maybe mirroring back a personality that they have to us. It might be something very similar to our personality. They help us in comforting. They help us in so many ways. Mm, I love that. So for someone who's listening, if they want some, some ideas of how they can communicate with their animal, their pet, it sounds like coming from that place of the heart. And I know that from my own background, that that is something that um, many traditions, that's, that's why we have the traditions of spirituality and religion and meditation. Prayer is to be able to quiet and to go within and to let that egoic mind settle and literally to even shift the brainwave pattern so that we can come more into our, our part of us that is more egoless, for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's exactly right, Emmy. Um, the process of intuition, and then you can turn that to, to intuitively talking to animals is, is very simple. It's very, very simple, but it's not easy. And, and it's not easy for what, why you just said. It's, we need to shift our brains and go into more of the creative hemisphere of our brains and to be able to really um, kind of, you know, not, not necessarily control or push back, but just, you know, have that ego be feel safe enough so that it is okay to allow the creative brain to take over and, and bring that information in. Into yeah. it. And I would imagine that some people listening maybe have already have a belief or have felt that they've communicated with an animal or a pet. And I think that that can happen in those relaxed moments when you're maybe with your pet, maybe petting them, um, maybe in moments where the animal seems to be suffering and the, the human wants to support them. And that maybe even it can come forward in dreams or what are some other ways that this animal communication might come forward for people? Yeah, so what I like to tell people is that if you've got an animal that you're very connected with, you're probably already communicating with them. You're probably already, you may or may not know it. You may have an idea that you might. And Holly, my dog, Holly, who's behind us in the, in the photo, um, she is a very excellent telepathic communicator. So some are, you know, use that more than others. She's got that evolved pretty well. 
inside of her, part of why she chose me and came in to help me. But so I'll just give an example of her. And I think a lot of people have probably experienced the same thing. So a lot of times Holly will look at me and look away, look at me and look away. And I won't be really thinking too much about it, but then it'll pop in my head. Oh, without even really giving it a thought, um, Holly needs to go outside and do her business. Well, in the situation like that, what you probably maybe don't realize is it seems like maybe you had that thought, but they're actually so telepathic that they're sending that message right to you. And so it seems like your thought, but it's not, it's theirs and they're telling you. And so, so that happens, I think, uh, uh, very, very often with people or, you know, um, you're putting out the message in your mind without realizing it, you, uh, that you're gonna go take a car ride or something. And you have a dog that's really, really loves to ride in the car. And so you don't even grab your keys, you didn't grab your wallet, you didn't grab your purse, you didn't even go to the door. And the next thing you know, the dog's at the door. Your dog is at the door. Well, <laughs> that's your dog reading your mind. And it can work the other way, as you mentioned too, Emmy, when maybe um, you're not feeling your best, you're feeling like, you know, you need some support. And have you ever noticed how the animals always know that? And they'll come right over and give you the comfort that you need. So that's all animal communication. That's all, that's all happening all the time. And, and the animals love it when we tune into that and pay attention. I was just going to say that phrase, pay attention, right? And, uh, and they have so much, so much to teach us, it sounds like. So how long does it typically take when you, because you teach classes, for somebody to become more confident with their animal communication? It's what you know, um, being a, an intuitive expert, and also um, kind of what we talked about before. It's really about, it's so simple, but it's not easy. And so it's really about moving that mind, you know, into a place of calm and going more into that creative mind and into your heart. And the more you can do that, the faster it happens. It takes practice. It takes a lot of practice, but not practice in a way that's the kind of practice we talk about with maybe um, getting good at riding your bike or something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's creative mind practice. So it's just, it's allowing and allowing that mind to be in, in that open space of, of creativity and of love. Yeah. And presence, right? Yeah. 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 That's all part of it. The same, the same piece of being really present and in the moment. And, you know, the other thing to, to know about that is that with animal communication, just like with intuition, people, what I've found with teaching is that people get messages many different ways. So one of the the favorite ways that animals have to communicate with humans is through images. And a lot of people are pretty good at seeing creative images. And so that can come through really easily. But sometimes it comes through words and thought. And sometimes it comes through a feeling in your body and you can feel their body at the same time. So it really kind of depends on on what's happening and, and how you're wired, how you as a human being are wired and which is, which is easiest for you. So the animals, it's like they know and they know how to get those messages through to you. Right, and in my experience with teaching people intuitive development and my own personal development with it is that when we doubt the ability, it really can block it. And so, I think that if somebody is coming to it from an open mind, that would probably enhance their abilities compared to somebody who is doubting it or questioning it, I would imagine. Yeah, it comes down to control. You're absolutely right, Emmy, and really letting go of the control 
and thinking you should be getting something or thinking it should come in a certain way or you know any of those kinds of things if you let go of the control which is still part of the ego right the thing we've been talking about and really allow you to be present and be and just allow those messages to come in it might be a word i've had a lot of students say it's a feeling and they say this feeling just comes over them and they don't even know how to describe it but it's so beautiful it's sort of like um, if you can think of it as because i love to use the heart and the heart chakra color is emerald green um, if you can think of it as almost a phone wire and you know when you're sending love to this animal and i can talk about the process if you'd like me to but you'll feel that love start to come back and it feels like a like a phone wire like oh they're on my line now and you can feel it and it connects and um it's amazing yeah it's like uh, being in the flow with it mm -hmm. <laughs> which is um something a lot of us humans are learning how to be better at anyway right <laughs> yeah most most definitely and and animals are one of our biggest teachers with that because they are always in the flow and they are always connected so um you know that's that's one thing that i that's a very much a common theme from the sessions i do with animals is they may say it different ways and it may come through uh in different scenarios but it's always you know my human needs to slow down <laughs> my human needs to be more present my human needs to be in their heart. Yeah, if you could share a little bit about the process or give an example of a story, I'm sure we would love to hear. Yeah. Um, so if the process is very much about um, breathing and then um, visualizing your heart and going in and then sending that same love that you have in your heart to the animal you wanna to connect with. And it's like I said earlier, the animal then knows that you're trying to communicate, you know, um, fully from your heart and it's authentic and it's truth and it's love because they don't wanna to talk to somebody who's gonna use this for, you know, now none of your listeners would do this, but for some other reason, you know, um, trying to control it or whatever. So, and they, and they won't, they won't communicate with people that, that are going from that perspective. But if you're coming from the heart, they know you, they can trust it and they'll, they'll feel it. And so then you can start to feel their energy, either their love energy or just a feeling that you feel, or like I said, if it's the phone line kind of connecting. Um, and then, and then basically you just ask a question or you listen. They love to talk. They have a lot to share. So um, if you let them, they'll really, really come through. And one of the things that I know, Emmy, you and I were talking about earlier is about how animals, how I've noticed and observed and experienced how animals are really shifting almost their roles with humans. They've always been our helpers. They've always been here to help, help us evolve. But because the planet is shifting so much and human beings are feeling really stressed, you know, and, and not understanding what's happening, the animals are giving, I guess I can call them for lack of a better word, more downloads than ever before. More information, more divine wisdom, more because they're really supreme beings and they're always connected to love. They're always connected to, to the universe, to God, you know, whatever word you wanna use with that, um, they're always connected. And so no matter what they're going through, um, even if they're experiencing stress of, you know, something on the planet, they're still gonna have that connection. And we do too, but the difference is, is they know. They, they never forget. And so they love to give information about what they need or what, what their human needs and, and to, to help them in their lives. I was um, communicating with an animal the other day, uh, a, a beautiful corgi, 
and she was fairly new to this family and she had been she's she was about five and she had been with another owner another human before that and so they brought her in and they you know they loved her but they had a concern and the concern was this dog was not warming up to the husband and they really didn't know why and they weren't concerned because sometimes she definitely wouldn't go around him and get close to him but even sometimes she would growl and so they were very concerned that maybe it wasn't the right fit or they just didn't know what to do so when I connected with this corgi what she told me was that um, she really needed this the husband to be able to have more patience and to be more present and loving kind have more loving kindness when he interacted with her and so we basically did a little a visualization on the on during the session where he worked with that a little bit just really short and the corgi was so grateful and the corgi actually came over and sat next to him, which he had, she had never done the whole time they had had him or had her. And what she told me was something really profound. She said, well, not only do I need that, but he needs that. So in other words, the husband really needed to learn how to have a little more patience. I had a little more, let that loving kindness come out let his heart come out a little bit more. And so that's an example of how synergistic it all works. So whatever the animal needs is oftentimes what the human needs and they can teach. And so it's, it's, it's very miraculous, I think. Mm, that's a beautiful example. It makes me think of, well, many things. It makes me think of how we are all mostly unconsciously, we're not aware that we're picking up on each other's energy all the time, everybody's energy. And so what you're teaching, uh, what I teach as well with, with humans, you're teaching with animals and their, their humans is how to be more aware of that and to be more loving and kind. And I know there's more that you do as well with helping with animals with health issues and behavioral behavioral, I put in quotes, right? Because here's an example of an animal that one might say has aggressive tendencies around a particular human or whatever, but you're, you're showing that there's an energetic, for lack of a better word, dynamic happening there. And I think about the energy healing sessions that I provide that very much, again, that's just a term, but it's connecting in on that intuitive. Um, I'm using the word psychic. I don't mean it from like predicting the future, but that, but some people resonate with that word that ability to connect on that, that level, that telepathic level. And when I'm providing energy healing, I'm able to, to, like you say, kind of drop in and connect energetically. And then the person will share with me what they're comfortable sharing based on uh, their, their sense of feeling safe with me. And it sounds like that's very similar with animals as well. Yeah, you're very right. I mean, it is. And, and they, they really like to, um, you're absolutely right. They need to feel safe for starters, like I mentioned, to be able to communicate, but they also understand their purpose. And so well, like in that particular scenario, you know, that Corgi chose those people and, she, you know, she came in with those, it's, it's a really, and I don't use the word paradigm very much, but it's a very big paradigm shift to really start to see animals in a new light in that, we think that we're saving them. You know, we brought, she, they, the family brought the corgi in and we're gonna help her. And what really happened is she came in with some of those wounds because, you know, she took that on to be able to help humans that, and particularly this family so that she could heal and they could heal at the same time. Well, I have, a dog that rescued my husband and I in the other room. <laughs> I'm wondering if you, if we could bring Lola out to say hello, and if you would be willing to maybe share what, if there's anything you're sensing from what Lola would like to communicate. Oh, I would be happy to talk with Lola. This is Lola. Yes. 
<laughs> Hi, Lola. Oh, she's relaxed. It's good. Oh. A nice yawn. She is a 10 year old Chihuahua. And uh, we got her when she was about a year old. And I know you've met Lola before, Kathy. So I'll see how long she lets me hold her, but I might need to put her down in just a moment. And that's, it's absolutely fine. You know, they don't need to be right in front of me to talk, but it is fun for everyone and me to see her. So as long as she wants to stay here. Oh, I'm going to put her down. I think she okay, wants well, to go in the other room. We got okay. to see her. And that, <laughs> yeah. That's a wonderful thing. So this is a, a wonderful time to bring up that. Yeah, you I, no, they don't need to be in the same room. You know, telepathic psychic communication works really long distance really well. So um, and they don't even have to be sometimes people think that they should be sitting and looking at me when they're talking that happens it's rare and when I know when that happens it's you know there's messages that are incredibly profound going through because it's like I want you to really get this so but well, let's some um, let's tune in to Lola so Lola Lola's very happy that she has an opportunity to speak to all of the listeners today and for people to hear what she has to say. Lola wants Emmy to know in Xander that she loves her life. She's treated like royalty is what she says. She's treated very well. And she really couldn't ask for a happier life. Everyone is kind to her and she really is um, doted upon really well. And she gets so happy about that. So one thing that she's asking Emmy, Emmy uh, about is what she'd like to know is, would you be willing to pull yourself away from work just a little bit more? Work meaning your work and any other tasks that you have in your life. She would like you to um, just pull yourself away from that a little bit more. And she's showing me your yard and that she would like to play with you. It could be in the house. She's in this case, she's showing me your backyard. So her message really is very simple. It's just balance a little bit, a little bit more. She's just asking for a little more balance. And you know, that's such a common thing that I hear from the animals is um, because as humans, we have such a tendency to, you know, do a lot of do. <laughs> and so the animals are so brilliant at helping us to be and help us to, to play. And play is another thing that especially dogs love to teach about play through, you know, they're, they're silly players. They, they play so, but it helps the child in us come out, right? Yes. And so she really, that's just what she's asking for. She loves her life. She's so grateful. Uh, let's see if there's any, any other big message that she wants you to know. Uh, she's very, um, I don't know that the word is proud, but she's, um, she's, she's just very proud that she is a part of your family and knowing how amazing the work you do, Emmy, and how um, connected you are spiritually. And she really is um, quite grateful and um, just feels, I wish I could think of a better word because it, there is just a little bit different than proud, uh, but it's not coming through. It's a, um, just, she's just so excited and so happy. And of course she chose you and, you know, she, 
and she says that, and you'll have to say if you, if you notice this, so she says that she does help keep you in balance, that she does pull you out of a little bit of the, the hamster wheel sometimes that, you know, all of us can get into. And she says she's really good at it, actually. And <laughs> it's true. And, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's mostly what she wants to say. We could keep going, but that's great. Well, yeah, yeah that is all sounds accurate. It's, I, I thought that might be I wasn't sure for sure what you'd pick up on, but I, I thought that might be some of what you might share. It is very true that uh, there are days, I, I, I have a home studio office uh, therapy uh, location here. And so I get to be with her throughout the day. And so when I start getting into things, sometimes she'll let me know, which is pretty much every morning we go out for our walk, which really helps, which is sometimes hard for me because I'm just getting into the flow of things, but it does shift my energy so that then when I come back into doing my work, I, uh, there's more spaciousness around me and in me. <laughs> she's saying she knows what she's doing <laughs> with the yeah. walk. That is very, very purposeful. And yes, she needs one, but she knows how much you need it. She says, you just need to get out a little bit, you know, out of that, just like you were saying, out of your space, um, to get a new perspective, to have the energy flowing just a little bit better. It always is, but she says um, it really helps open and clear some things, gets things moving. Definitely, yeah, because she can probably feel like the intensity ramping up, and the the walks have have become earlier and earlier in the day. <laughs> I've noticed of when she wants to go. And it is very true. We treat her like a princess because she is. And uh, I mean, we, we have, I think, pretty good healthy boundaries with that, but we love her very, very much unconditionally. And she's a great joy in our lives as well. Well, she is very grateful for you and grateful for the, the loving kindness and care that you give her. And she just, um, she's, she, she just, she would like everyone to, to know how animals feel. And this is, she said, most pets, uh, she says, this is, this is common of how they feel. They, they you know, it's, it's a good representation of how they help in, in very simple but profound ways. And um, she's very much enjoying her moment in the sun but it's not really that to her it's just an opportunity to voice what she wants everyone to know oh i love that she's a sweetheart and she's very fun and funny and playful and we're super grateful and i hope that everybody who wants an animal can have an animal or has access to animals because they really are uh, such lovers well one more thing emmy that she wants to say is um that She's really enjoying being an only, only pet right now, right now. And uh, she loves being the center of both of your attention. Yes, because we had another dog, Toby, for almost 17 years who passed uh, about a year and a half ago. And within the first month, we thought about, do we want to have another dog? And what was so funny was that <laughs> Lola got all this, she got twice as much attention as she was because right it was there was another dog who needed attention before and at first I think it felt strange to her but then she seemed to really enjoy it and so we haven't yet got another dog and uh, we don't want to upset her <laughs> by getting another one so we also enjoy we're enjoying being with just Lola right now. She loves the flow that's happening right now so um, and it could change and you'll know. You'll yeah. Know. Yeah. Thank you for that. I love that. Yeah. I think you, you mentioned to us in a private reading when Toby passed that, that uh, about possible reincarnation that we would know through the eyes, which was very helpful. So thank you for that. Yeah. I can add something about animal, you know, spirit animals. 
animals a lot of times are spirit animals. Our pets can be our spirit animals. And all that means is that they're coming in to help us. They're helping us evolve, helping us support us on the planet. And oftentimes they will come back over and over and over again, whether in the same lifetime, your lifetime, or in another lifetime. Um, and they take different forms. They're not so attached to their bodies like we are. So they, mm. they can sometimes be other animals, um, especially from lifetime to lifetime with mm -hmm. their humans. Yeah, we had uh, a visitation. Uh, both my husband and I dreamt about Toby just a few nights ago and told each other. And it was felt very real, right? This is what people say when they have visitations um, or people who have near-death experiences or spiritually transformative experiences, they often describe it as more real than real. So I was telling my husband about it and he said, oh, I had a dream too that Toby came to me and he was just happy. I think I was petting his belly and he was just with us, which was really sweet. Yeah, he just wants you to know that he's around. Yeah, it was so lovely. So, so Kathy, I'm curious, do you do you have a sense of do humans sometimes reincarnate as as other animals or do do are just creatures in general take other forms do you think or do you have any well humans are a little bit different than than animals and mm -hmm. so um humans do tend to you know incarnate as humans again but because mm -hmm. again there's different purposes and so the animals come for support that's their main we can almost think of them like our guardian angels but they're in the flesh in fur or whatever sometimes they're in skin <laughs> but um that's how that's a good way to think about it because that's really their purpose but we get them with us physically which is so awesome yeah well lola definitely feels like an angel and all the other animals that i've had we grew up with predominantly cats and I just still have a profound recollection which I'm sure a lot of people do listening that they have their favorite pets who um, spiritually they want to stay connected to and I think that's really very helpful for us to stay with that the energy that they can bring to us and like you say that love yeah and and like you mentioned with Toby once they pass they're still helping us mm -hmm. they're just you know not in physical form anymore Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed how you slowly went in or however you would describe that to communicate with, with Lola. I, I believe you mentioned that you have uh, a free offering on your website to help people with communicating with animals. Yeah, uh, I do. I've got a nine minute free download that will walk you through specific steps and it's, and it's not complicated on how to connect with an animal and start communicating. And, you know, it's kind of like what we talked about earlier. It's the more you practice, you know, the better you'll get at it. And so, you know, you may, you may not feel anything the first time and that's okay, but just keep, keep trying it and you'll, you'll get there, you'll feel it. So yeah, there's a, a free download and we can add the link and then uh, people can get that and, and start, practicing or, or giving it a try and playing with it right away. Well, that's so generous of you. Well, we need to wind down in just a few moments here. What does God or spirituality mean to you? And I hope it's okay that I ask this question. This is something because the focus of healing connections is on this holistic mind, body, spirit connection. I think it's always inspiring to hear that answer from the different various guests that are on the podcast. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, it's really love, you know, in a word, love, love and truth. And it's about the vibration of energy of love. And it doesn't matter what you call it. It's all the same. It could be oneness. It could be the universe. It could be spirit. It could be God, you know, any, anything you want to call um, it's love. And you know, to bring it back to the animals, they live in that vibration of pure, undiluted, unconditional love. And that's why they feel so special. And that's why they can help us so much. Oh, I love it. 
Well, I just admire what you do, Kathy, and um, you also emanate such love and beautiful vibes. And thank you for blessing us with, with your energy and what you have to share. And is there anything else you want to share with the listeners, the viewers about animal communication? Just, just to know, and we've covered this already, but one more time about how the animals are really here to help us, whether that be an animal in the wild that you encounter or whether it be your own pet. They all take different forms and they help. It could be anything from your fish, your pet fish, to you know, even a, a snake. I've communicated with snakes before. I know not, not everyone loves snakes, but um, to a rabbit, I have a bunny as well, um, to a dog or a cat or a horse. They're all here to support us and to help us in our journey. Yeah, and that's such a good point that uh, people who maybe have dreams of animals or see literally in the physical what we what we deem the physical world, you might see uh, an eagle, you might see some type of animal, and that might have significant meaning for you in your life. There could be a message there for you. Exactly. And in the visualization download that I've got, if you went and did that and, and tried it, you could actually communicate with wild animals in the wild too. The only thing that I recommend is that it's not the best to do it in their presence because you can really kind of disrupt their energy. But you can, if you're out for a walk and you encounter some deer or a hawk or an eagle and you're like, wow, I feel like they're really giving me a message. I just don't know what it is. Then, you know, try the, they'll, they'll still give you the message, even though it's not in the moment. If they had a message for you, they'll give it to you. So you can use those same steps to get that message from them. Wonderful. And how can people learn more about your classes and your photography and they can get in touch with you? So um, for animal communication, it's kathyvangilder.com. And for photography, pet photography, it's kathyvangilderphotography.com. And like I said, there's a, a free download on my website for uh, animal communication. And Right now, I'm currently, just so your, your listeners know, I'm currently working on some new online classes and courses, um, which will be ready very soon. If you sign up for the download or if you go on that page and give your email, I'll be notifying you just as soon as they're done, which will be very soon. Fantastic. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for sharing all of your beautiful wisdom with all of us. And I hope many people get in touch with you. Well, I mean, thank you so much. And, you know, it's all reciprocal because your energy and your love and your healing is amazing. So I thank you so very much. Mm, thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you all for listening. And until next time, be well.